how you doing, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ? Uh, I'm making this video because I've, how do I want to put this? There's, there's people in this world today who need to realize that the God of the Bible is not going to spend all eternity telling you the same thing. At the end of the day, you have to understand that the Bible says what it says. And it and in, like Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, Jesus said in Luke chapter 13, verse 3, that but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And every day that you go unsaved, every day that you you bank on your thief on the cross. And, and I've had I've had a lot of conversations with people and they really people are so deceived with the thief on the cross moment that they actually believe that there's people in their lives that they lived completely blasphemous lives and they were completely wicked and they would say, well, maybe that person at the last minute got saved. But that's a cocky and presumptuous thing to think because you're banking on the fact that every person. So you're assuming that every human being that dies is going to be given a 15, 20 minute, 30 minute or five hour gap between when the point that they're they start to die and when they die but what you don't realize is that you could go to the corner store and get shot and that's it you could go to sleep and not wake up you could get in a car accident so it's not wise to play Russian roulette with your soul and people call us unloving as Christians because we tell them what the Bible says and these people will even go as far as asking you questions. But if a person wants to continue asking you questions, at some point you have to ask them, well, if I answer your 100 questions or if I answer your 200 questions, what then? Are you going to repent? And the Bible says that these people are ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. So... And if you are a Christian and you know what the commands of God are, you know what Ezekiel 15, Ezekiel 18, and Ezekiel 33 says about what will happen to you if you don't give somebody a warning, then you are required by God to tell this, these people the truth, regardless if they'll reject you. Jesus said, the world hates me because I testify that its deeds are evil. In Luke chapter 6, verse 26, Jesus said, woe unto you. When all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. So now we need to also realize that we need to give people the truth and love and not say things and do things that would intentionally offend people. But people should be attentive. We, we should offend people righteously. Give them the commands of God and let the Holy Ghost do the work. So I say all this to say that there are people today who... They, you can tell by the way they respond that they don't want to know the Lord because their responses are always the same. That's your interpretation of that scripture. Or they'll call you a Pharisee. They'll call you a male chauvinist. It, the, the, or they'll say that it's not what you said. It's how you said it. And you really didn't say it wrong. You may have just been saying it passionately. But those are manifestations of that person's heart they really didn't want to hear what you had to say and they really just wanted a, an occasion to accuse you of wrongdoing but I was there was an example and a lot of people don't understand that you can't have Jesus and you can't have your sin it says in uh, 1 Corinthians I think chapter 10 verse 21 and 22 it says Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? So the Bible makes it clear that you can't have a relationship with Christ and have your sin. And so, but there was something that I was thinking about lately that 
that the that the, I believe the Lord showed me that was really scary is that for 120 years Noah preached and warned people that judgment was coming and that they needed to get on the ark and call on the Lord to be saved. Well, just like people do today, they they love their pleasure, they love their lust, but they don't realize who they're really playing with. And here's and these numbers, I, all, I made them up, but I think it gives a perfect illustration of who the guy of the Bible is and how serious he is about sin. So let's just let's just assume that the earth is hypothetically 10,000 years old, right? Let's also assume that when God flooded the earth, let's assume that a thousand years had passed. So we're talking 1000 BC, right? Well, let's also assume that <clears throat> when God destroyed the earth, <clears throat> that there was only a million people on earth. But we also know factually that only eight people out of that one million were saved. So that right there confirms what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, where he said, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So if we operate under those hypothetical numbers, that means that that statement, obviously our Lord, because he's God, he told us the 100% truth. Many people aren't going to make it. So if out of a million people, only eight people were saved, that means 999,992 people went to hell for all eternity. And that means that they've been in the flames of hell for 9,000 years and an eternity to go. So if you're alive today and you have a chance to repent, you have a chance to serve the Lord. What are you waiting for? Those people did the same thing that you did, that you're doing. You, 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 they kept carousing. They kept getting drunk. They kept committing homosexual acts. They kept fornicating. They kept getting drunk. They kept committing adultery on their wife or committing adultery on their husband. They kept sinning against God by setting unrighteous examples for people who see their sin. They kept blaspheming and then... God shut the door of the ark and he rained down rain for 40 days and 40 nights and left the water on the earth for 150 days. The God of the Bible is not playing. If you hear the name of the Lord, the Bible says, harden not your heart is in the provocation. Do not follow your feelings. In Matthew chapter 4, Jesus made it clear. He said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, he said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And I think it's Jeremiah chapter 17, verse uh, 6 or 9, that says, uh, The heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? So the Lord Jesus Christ, throughout the whole Bible, always taught us to not chase our feelings. Our feelings, when I used to be a sinner, and I used to live in sin, my feelings told me or made me think that when I was upset I was justified in my sin my feelings made me believe that I was justified in my drunkenness that I was justified in getting a uh, using drugs it made me justified it, it made me think I was justified by committing adultery I wasn't I was an enemy of a holy God it says in Psalm 5 5 that thou hatest all workers of iniquity it says in Psalm 711, God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. Because we love you, people, we tell you the truth. Because we don't want to see you go to hell. You're, you are on a cliff right now, and you're getting ready to fall off. Please, turn from your sin today. And it's in a nutshell. I'll probably talk about something. I had another topic I wanted to talk about, but I'll go down that road in a later video. But it's 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 a serious thing. There's a statistic, and I don't know the exact number, but about 150 something thousand people die every day. And if we base our our assumptions on the fact that out of one million people. 
presumptuously during the times of Noah were saved. Or, or no, out of one million people, only eight people were saved. Imagine how many people out of 150,000 are actually saved. You could be that 150,000. You could get in a car accident. You could go to sleep tonight and die. And you're going to remember every time the Lord sent a righteous man or woman to you to call you to repentance and to give you the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you said, no, Lord, I don't want you. And just before I go, I want to bring up a really quick example. There's a friend of mine told me, and like I think he said like Luke 14 or Luke 21, or in the book of Luke, Jesus, the marriage supper was ready. And then Jesus came to those who the marriage supper was prepared for. And I'm paraphrasing here. And Jesus said that it's time to come in. These people turned around and said, well, Jesus, I don't want to come. I got to go take care of a wife or I got to go build a business or I'm just not ready. Jesus turned to those people. And I want you to hear these words very clearly. Jesus said that because those people didn't come when he called them, that they will never enter his rest. They'll never enter his kingdom. That's something you need to think about. It's time to get right with God, people. Please turn to the Lord Jesus Christ today in repentance and faith. Have a blessed day in Jesus' name.